Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a really simple version of something that I got requested over on my Discord channel. And that is how to persist unlocked items in between sessions. Now, there's no real one-size-fits-all for this. You've really got to tailor this to your own project. So I'm just going to show you a really simple way of doing it. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll see where I can help you. Just before we get into this, I just want to thank this video's sponsor, Gigatank3000. I've got his links down in the description. Go check him out on his website. Go follow him on Twitter. Check out his new game that's in development. You're all going to love it. And I also just want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's get into it. What have I actually got here? Well, I've got a simple shop, which is just a panel with three buttons. And each of those buttons is responsible for an individual unlock. So we've got one that will give our player double health, one that will give us a double coin value, and one that will give us double stamina. And as it says, your shop will be much better. But other than the actual design, what else have we got? Well, I've got a shop manager script, which is nothing fantastic. All it has is, we'll come back to this unlockable matrix in just a second, but we have three methods, one for buying health, coins and stamina, and all they do, they set this unlockable matrix values to either true or false. So when we buy something, we set the unlockable matrix has health perk to true, and all that the unlockable matrix is, is a serializable class, which has these three booleans. And then right at the end, again, this could be done much better, but this is just an example. If you want an actual example of how a shop system works, then I'll pop a link up to my scrolling shop interface video series. But all we're going to do is change the unlock purchase icon, which is this little red X, to a green tick. And then we're going to set the button's interactability to false. So we can see if we play the game, this is working perfectly fine. So we start, we see, if I click on double health, the button's no longer interactable and we've unlocked it, we have our tick. And we can do that for the other two. Perfectly fine. The problem arises though when we try and replay our game, we come back to it, and everything's locked again. Obviously, this isn't right. If you've spent money on an item, you expect that item to be reusable throughout the rest of your game. So, let's try and work around this. So, there's not actually that much that we're going to need to do to do this. If we just pop back over to our shop manager script, the first thing that we're going to need is, well, we're actually going to be needing to use, so using the system.io namespace, because we're going to be dealing with external files. And next, we're going to need a reference to our file's path. So that'll be a private string, and that's just unlock matrix path. And what we're actually going to do, there's multiple ways you could do this as well, but we're going to use JSON. Now, you could use binary serialization, or maybe player prefs, but I don't advise using player prefs. And I also have three videos on each of those save states in more detail if you want to check those out. But like I said, we're going to use JSON. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that we keep a reference to our file path. So we're going to cache that in our unlock matrix path string. So we're just going to set this to unlock path matrix thing to, and we're going to use string interpolation. I prefer using this because it just means you don't have to have all those ugly plus symbols everywhere. And we're going to save it in application.persistentdatapath because we know persistent data path is going to exist for every game. So it's a perfect place to save data. And we're going to call this file unlockmatrix.json. Perfect. So now we have a file path ready to go. So inside of our start method, we want to check if that file exists. Now, the only time this file isn't going to exist is any time you play the game prior to buying anything. So we don't want to rely on the fact that that file exists. So we'll just do a quick check with file.exists, which is in the system namespace, and we'll just pass in our unlock matrix path. 
Now if our file exists, then we must have at least purchased one item. So we want to read that JSON and then pass it into our unlockable matrix object. So we'll just create a quick string and we'll call that JSON. And we'll set that equal to file.readAllText, which again is in the system namespace. And again, we're just going to pack, pass in our unlock matrix path. So now we've got that JSON held as, as a string, we want to actually parse that into an unlockable matrix object. And the way that we do that, we've already got our reference up here. So we can set unlockable matrix equal to JSON utility dot from JSON because we're reading it. And in our angle brackets, what we're going to do, we're going to pass in the type which we want to parse this to, which is unlockable matrix with the capital U, the actual object, not the reference to it. And then in the parentheses, we can pass in our JSON string. So now all being well, we've read in our JSON and this unlockable matrix is fully populated. And now what that's going to do, whenever we re-render our shop, it's going to check our unlockable matrix and then check all of our booleans inside and it's automatically going to lock our button and also put our little tick there. But currently we're not actually saving JSON, we're loading JSON or potentially loading it, but we don't actually have any yet. So let's just go down to the bottom and we'll create a quick save method. We'll just make this private because we don't need this anywhere else. Void because it's not returning anything. And we'll just call this save JSON, you can call this whatever you like. And it's going to be quite similar to the loading method that we've already got. I'm going to create a string, call it JSON, set that equal to JSON utility dot to JSON this time. And all we have to do is pass in our object, which is a unlockable matrix. So that's going to automatically pass all of our data inside of unlockable matrix into a JSON string. And then all we have to do is save that as we would any other standard flat file. So we can do that with file dot write all text, pass in our path name, which is unlock matrix path, and then pass in the JSON object. And then the final thing we need to do is just make sure that we call save JSON after we buy an object or after we buy an unlockable. So that should be it. Now every time we press a button, we're going to set our boolean to true, we're going to re-render the shop. So we get our tick and our button's no longer interactable, and then we save our JSON. And then as soon as we start the game, we're going to read our JSON file, parse it in, and re-render the shop. So by default, anything that we buy should automatically be checked. So let's try this. We play our game, it's technically the first time, so everything is locked. If we buy double health, close our game, and then relaunch our game, we should see double health is automatically purchased. And we can do that for the other two. Back out and go back in. And there we go. We've kept our menu state between game sessions. Really simple stuff. Now obviously you can expand on that. You can actually add those features into your player dependent on what value is returned from the JSON. This instance is just keeping that menu in line with what our player's already unlocked. So this has been a relatively short one, but I hope this has actually been of use. I know a lot of games use this, and I have seen quite a few questions floating around on Facebook about how to persist these kind of things between game sessions. So, with that, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more Bytes as Unity hints and tips.